Yes, uh, Jay and DeAndre, both redshirted. We've had great success with that over the years. Um, they, um, I've said this before, but they show flashes and great promise. Both are very talented. Uh, they work hard. They both have added some strength. As you'll see, most of our guys <clears throat> have gotten stronger, which is what you expect from an off season of work. But they, um, they show those moments in practice where they, they really – um, excite you. They they make some plays that are impressive. For them, it'll just be you know becoming very disciplined, very steady, and being able to handle the physicality um, and grow from that. I remember when Anthony redshirted. He had even played a year of college basketball at South Carolina. Anthony Gill, and then when he um, came off his redshirt, it there's a little bit of an adjustment period, even with guys that have had college experience. This will be new to them, so. Um, I think it'll there'll be some I think some ups and downs, but uh, if they'll keep working and improving, I like you know what they give us. They both can step out and shoot it, and they can make some plays above the rim. And um, you know it's just going to be a process that you know they'll have to honor. I'll have to continue to be patient with them, but keep encouraging them because there's a lot of good stuff uh, in both of those young men. What did you want from Nigel Johnson, and what have you seen so far? So far, Nigel, you know, he's um, – he, he, well, we needed um, – with the guys transferring, we needed – we thought some athleticism, a guy who could be a, a point combo type of player. And Nigel brings some quickness, a guy that, offensively speaking, can touch the paint. And, um, you know, he can get it going shooting the ball. And just he scored <clears throat> in – in college games for has a lot of college basketball games under his belt so that experience will be valuable and then um, we're hoping he'll be able to really at times pick up the ball pressure the ball guard quick point guards um, or real quick offensive players so again defensively he's uh, he's shown all those things and stretches it's just kind of becoming consistent and getting a feel for our system our players those kinds of things but uh, again like Jay and DeAndre, he's shown some really good flashes, but he's got a lot of game experience. That's the one thing that, you know, we, we have a few guys with that, but a lot of uh, a lot of newer guys or less experienced players this year. David? I, I think I have this right. This will be the first time you've coached a team without a returning double-figure score since your first year at Washington State. That year turned out pretty yeah, well. Yeah, thanks, thanks for those fun facts. Uh, I appreciate that, <laughs> no, David. But, but is, is there – well, no, that year turned out. Yep. But w is there a similarity in, in the roster makeup, and what are the challenges of coaching a team like that? Yeah, I think there's just a lot of unknowns. I, I'll be honest, in practice, there have been some practices where I've really liked – so it's early, but I said, boy, we, we have a chance to be pretty darn good. And then there's some practice where I say – we got a ways to go. Now, I think most college coaches would be saying that right now, but there is uncertainty. Um, we're going to need some of those guys who got experience in their first year uh, to, you know, be thrown into bigger roles. And even guys that haven't played before are going to have those opportunities. The newness of Nigel is is uncertain. And then, you know, obviously with Isaiah and with Devin and Jack, guys that are experienced, they've been such important parts of our success. They've been steady. They've been uh, terrific um, just cement guys or glue guys, whatever you want to say, and they're going to hopefully continue to expand their role. But that core group of those five, well, freshmen or first years we brought them in, they're important in this process. When you start talking about, you know, Mamadi, uh, Ty, Kyle, DeAndre, and Jay, and then obviously the addition of, I just hate leaving out guys, but the addition of Nigel, you know, those guys who got some game experience, that was important for them last year. They're going to have to step up into a, um, not stretch themselves, but just they're going to be called upon more, which is going to be great for them because that group has a nice core, and if they stay together, they're going to be good. And um, uncertainty, but exciting. So, Tony, do you view Ty as a point guard who can shoot and Kyle as purely a two guy who can shoot? A two guy or two guard? Two guard. Okay. I didn't know if you said it. You said guy, I think, Hank, but uh, that's right. Well, Kyle Guy yeah. is a guard yeah. and a two guy, so all right. Um, no, he. Um, all right. He's good. Um, I, what I like in all my perimeter guys is versatility and completeness. Um, but specifically regarding Kyle, he's at times played, um, handled the ball. Uh, Ty was out for a little bit of some practices, and and Kyle can play the one or the two. 
Um, he's just, you know, so effective when he's playing, moving without the ball and then getting in his hands. But if you've watched, you have watched us, you know that we need our one, twos, and threes to really be able to play off ball screens, handle the ball, create for others. And uh, I think that regarding Kyle, he can do both. Obviously, he's a threat flying off those screens. Same with Ty. Ty has a, you know, he's um, he's a point guard. He thinks the game offensively more like a, a pure one. But, um, and I think he can do that. And it's always, I always turn it to, okay, who can, can Kyle guard a one or a two? Can Ty guard a one or a two? It's just matchups and what those guys can do. And we have a team defense. But I kind of look at it that way because offensively it's pretty interchangeable with us. You know, obviously with Nigel, even Devin, he can, um, you know, it's just good decision making. But who can you guard? And that's what determines the matchup. Uh, Tony, there's a lot of buzz around uh, Jay Huff, and I was wondering, can you talk about his growth and, and what you like about his game? And, yeah. And just uh, well, he's seven feet. Uh, he's gotten stronger, so that'll be important. He's he's still thin, but he's he's put on a lot of good weight. And I think the versatility of Jay offensively is he can step out and has a good looking three ball. You know, he'll shoot it, and at times in practice it that dynamic stretches the defense. So that ability uh, runs the floor and he, he can block some shots. It's for, for Jay and really Nigel, even DeAndre, Marco, Frankie hasn't practiced yet. The guys that are new, um, being able to think quick enough and not be reactive. So I think those are the challenges for those guys and Jay as he continues to improve on that. And we've seen that it'll be good. Ball screen defense, you know, being able to help. You watch, I always try to use Isaiah as the example. He's such a, a great anticipator and such a great help defender, and he's continuous and in two places at once. But Jay, um, but he can block some shots because he's very long and, and he runs the floor, bounces well. And then his ability to shoot, and he's got, you know, good hands and good touch. It's just getting in the game experience and, you know, being able to, to do it under the lights and all those things. But as, as I said to start, DeAndre and him, the flashes, you see these flashes, and boy, that's nice to see a seven footer do that or a six, seven, six, eight wing player do the things DeAndre does. So there are those moments. Um, but you know, what I'm hitting him on is let's get the meat and potatoes and then more substance, um, be continue or be disciplined and consistent, but a lot of stuff to like. Mike, David mentioned what you lost in terms of scoring and, and what you're bringing back. In terms of leadership, um, Devin Hall, Isaiah Wilkins, what kind of a role do you see them and do you see them as fits in those roles or as different guys? They've been terrific. Um, I, you know, I usually don't make a big deal out of this, but this year I did it. I, you know, I named three captains to start and usually we kind of just let it happen organically, the guys that go out there. I, but this year I wanted to because Isaiah is a natural leader. Devin's a natural leader, and so is Jack Salt. Jack's been in the program. These guys have put a lot of time and energy into this program. They've been through so many experiences, and uh, they just, you see them as the culture was established a long time ago, taking the young guys, explaining things, trying to hold guys accountable. I think we have three excellent voices in practice, and I would assume, obviously, in the locker room. And, and even, you know, Ty's got some of that, and all the guys do. They're good that way, but I think those three, um, really want they they know that there's some inexperience they know that there's uncertainty but they uh they've really taken the leadership role seriously and i've tried to make a bigger deal out of them being the captains and um they've embraced it and i like what i've seen you know i don't know how many practices we're in but that's that's been isaiah since he's been here it really has he's natural that way and devin devin too actually but for sure isaiah and then jack's just evolved and uh, he's such a he just wants to make things work. Just a comment. Do you then kind of make a bigger deal about the captain thing to push them or to get the team to I just, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I just felt like I, I said, I want to do this. They're all wearing these big C's on their sweaters and they walk around campus. It's pretty cool. Around grounds, sorry. <laughs> to get back into it. Um, and they're cardigans. <laughs> um, they're penny loafers. So, um, but um, they, um, they actually are. Um, I just, I, I think I wanted to establish that just because I wanted to empower them. I think when you empower guys and, you know, I said, look, if there's any issues, you go to them. I, I think they, they've embraced that. I want it. Yeah, probably both and. It really was to give them that role because uh, they're going to be important. There isn't as much experience this year besides those guys, to be honest. And that, that's the part that is uncertain.
Tony, um, this isn't – hi, Tony, over here. Yep. This isn't my official question, but I just need a clarification. You said Jay bounces well. Do you mean he jumps well? How, yeah, how he's bouncy here. He's, he's, he can get off, throw, run, and jump, and um, just he's a good – a leaper. I, some guys, you know, they're real – like I was – Darion Atkins was real quick off the floor, second bounce, quick. Um, Jay, not bad that way, but he's just – he can leave the floor. He's got good timing and as far as his length, just blocking shots, meaning he – Go up, you see him take a couple dribbles off the, you know, make a couple dribbles and he'll get up there and his head's by the rim and all that stuff. So he's, when he gets momentum, he can leave the floor and get up there. Okay, and my question is, um, not a lot of buzz nationally about you guys this year. Like David said, you don't, you don't have a double figure right. score coming back. So is this the kind of team you like, the kind of challenges you like. You're very loose today. I don't know if it's because you had a nice morning or your yeah, orphans are kicked in. But uh, is it – are you having – Just seeing you, I just get so happy when I see you. So that's, I think – I'd be no. surprised how many people say that. Yeah, yeah, I'm feel? sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like my team every year. I really do uh, – we have to earn it. We don't have the returners coming back, the, the guys that we've been fortunate to have in years past with that experience that's proven. So we got our, it's always, you guys hear me, I feel like a broken record, but you're never that far away from being, I think, really good and being below that line. So I, I think there's always uh, optimism and hope. I think the guys, again, are excited about it. Um, a lot of new opportunities there and playing time opportunities with, with who we have, so I, I, um, I like the group as of now. We get into some scrimmages, and I'm not allowed to say who we're scrimmaging. I think last year we had that issue, but um, that will tell a lot. You know, you're you're going against each other, you're playing, you're working on things, and then when you get to play against some other people, you'll get a feel, and we'll be into it pretty quick with games. So that's that's always the truth serum, and I think this team will, I hope, improve as the year progresses. Progresses, and we've got obviously things to work on. Tony, do you recall where you were when you heard about the FBI involvement in basketball recruiting? What was your reaction, and have you thought about any kind of remedies to the yeah. situation? I, I can't remember when or where I was, but it's um, I think the game is a great game, and I think it's good, actually. I, I don't know how much is going on. I... Everybody says, well, this is the tip of the iceberg. There's so much stuff happening. And there's some things you hear a lot of as a coach and makes you wonder, but it doesn't pay to assume anything. This happened. I think it actually will be a positive in the long run um, for sure because our game is a great game. And there are programs out there that are trying to do it the right way and are going to hopefully from this we're going to make changes as a, we had a, a long teleconference um, with the NABC and I think most of the coaches were on it just for, okay, how do we, how do we use this as a positive? It's like after someone made the comment, you have a bad practice, right? You figure out what you got to do, you address the problems and then you go to work on it. So my hope is that this will shed some light on things that are going on that are absolutely unacceptable. And maybe it's been going on for a long time, but still doesn't make it right. And, um, what I'm thankful for is the young men in our program, how we run it, that we can, we're not perfect, but we can we can sleep at night and we can go about it the right way. I hope again some changes will be made. People will think um, long and hard about the risk reward. I don't know before, maybe guys were getting away with it. There weren't penalties. Now the FBI is involved and other people. Now I think you have to think long and hard if you're gonna um, make some of those decisions. But uh, I hope again in the long run that the game's better and it'll be a more of a level playing field. Do you have any opinions on the changes that should be made? The changes that should be made, I think that, you know, there's been a lot of talk from the NCA about, I, nah, I'm not even going to, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on that because I, I'm not 100% sure, and if you don't know where you're at for sure, it's best not to. I think some things need to happen. Um, people need to be held accountable, of course, but um, – it's just going to be interesting to see what the next steps are. It really is. So I, I've, I've got a few things floating around, but now isn't the right time for that. I need to collect my thoughts more on that. Speaking of collecting your thoughts, uh, last season didn't end, obviously, on a, on a good note. You guys struggled from the, on the offensive end against Florida. When you look back on last season, what are some of the lessons you take away from that and specifically on the offensive end? Yeah, I think, um, you know, last year 
um, with Isaiah, I, I don't want – last year was a, a good year. I, I said that before, to, to win as many games as we did and to advance into the second round. Um, with all that came at us, I was – I was actually, when I stepped back, that was a solid year. Uh, of course, you didn't like the way it ended uh, against Florida and how they just manhandled us and even some of the games at the end. But um, – you're always looking to improve and say, okay, we struggle in those areas. What can we do? Now there's some uncertainty now so we with the guys, but those always make you hopefully a better team, a better coach, figuring out areas where you're, you're not as strong. Um, but, yeah, that, that also provides motivation, too, to, to work hard in the offseason. I don't think you need much of that. But, um, but after that UNC-Wilmington game, I remember, this is great. We're into the next round. You know, we're playing, remember that feeling and then how quickly that turns. You, you, you get beat as bad as we did and play that poorly. And then, okay, now we got to regroup. But uh, overall, that, that season, um, again, what London accomplished in his career, uh, uh, what that team, I think, they came close for the most part to reaching their potential. And um, I always look at that. Well, I mean, I think we have to become – you're going to laugh, but I think we have to come a little more disciplined defensively. Um, we have to handle some ball screen coverages a little better. Those things were exploited. Of course, offensively, finding out ways to, if we can get to the line more, if we can score inside more, if there's any opportunities in transition to go. Um, last year, we became so reliant on how we shot the ball when we felt like we didn't have an inside presence when Austin Nichols wasn't part of it and we had certainly time to adjust. We didn't even if we weren't terrific interior scoring, we, we probably needed to to find ways to try to go inside more and trust those guys. So our, you know, Jack, Isaiah, Mamadi, um, and you know, and Jay, I guess now um, those guys and even some of the guards, those guys have gone to work on trying to become better. Maybe they're not Anthony Gill right now, but they're better than they were last spring. So. Um, I think touching, touching the post more, whether it's guards, whether it's bigs, and finding ways there. So I think those combination of those things and then just getting to work and teaching these new guys um, is is probably what's what's next for us. And there's obviously some great wins um, in that season with that many wins and how many close games we were in. It seems like Jack has been here forever. But in <laughs> He's got two more years. <laughs> in terms of his athletic ability, eligibility, he's only at the halfway point. How far has he come from your first workout with him at JPJ? And in your conversations with Kirk Penny, did you ever question Kirk's ability as a talent, right. talent evaluator? Yeah. Jack, you mentioned that first workout. I maybe have told this story before, but it, it, it's great. He, it was a early in the – I don't know if it was the summer he came or the fall. I can't remember when Jack came. It seems like it was so long ago. But he, he said um, – I think he said to Coach Sanchez after the workout, you know, he's as tough and hardworking as they come. He said, well, thank you, Coach Sanchez. That was a lovely workout. Or, <laughs> and uh, Ron kind of looked at him, or he said it was beautiful or lovely. You know, it's a New Zealand or an Australian kind of term. And just like, wow, you don't hear too many guys that, you know, 6'10", his size, say thanks for the lovely workout. But um, it was uh, – he was just such a, such a hard worker, such a, a polite young man, and then just to see – his physicality and toughness. He people don't know what he played through last year. He his back was really troubling him. He had a lot of issues and he just gutted through it at the end. And we were running a little bit on fumes with Isaiah and, and then with him. And um, he he'll run through a wall for you. And he brings a physicality. And and I think he's he's getting better with his finishing and even some moves inside. And as I said. We probably needed to throw it inside a little more to those guys just to let them have a go at it and see what could happen. But uh, he's improved, I think, every year. And he's just one of those guys that gets people open. He screens well. He's so unselfish. He, he, he bangs with those guys inside. And, and you need that component um, when you go against different players and just um, for him so understands our team defense. Kirk Penny told me about him. And um, Kirk was pretty much spot on. Um, with what his evaluation was of him. You know, again, you never can project and didn't say, hey, he's going to be a 20 and 10 guy for you. He said, but he, when you're 6'10 and you play that hard and you're that much of a team guy, there's got to be a place for 6'10 guys with that kind of physicality. And absolutely, and he's, he's moved the needle every year to get better.
he doesn't say it was a lovely workout anymore either. So, <laughs> Coach. Hey, Chris. Yeah, I read an article earlier today that referenced an elite glue guy, not just a glue guy, but an elite glue guy. Does that describe Isaiah Wilkins? Absolutely. Or is he more than that? No, he's as good as – he's a warrior. You watched him battle through that last year. And that – I mean, we talked about it uh, so much, whatever, mono-like things, but he just kept giving and giving. And, and um, he just – I haven't been around too many guys that are affect the game with his help defense as he does. It's just he's he's so instinctual and he anticipates and he's always covering things – for other guys and then offensively he he's really wired that way from day one coach martin who coached malcolm too uh, did a great job and um he's um i remember he started his did he started he played a lot of minutes his first game at as a first year at jmu and i can remember it like it was yesterday i got a few memories and i remember he had a hit a couple loosened a couple baseline jumpers picked up a couple charges did things and i said to whoever was next to me we got ourselves a good one for the next four years. And I remember that. And it's just he's been such an important part of our success and our runs. And that um, that's Isaiah, the, uh, yeah, elite. I think he is an elite glue guy. So, Tony, back yeah. here. You talk a lot about the improvement from year one to year two. How quickly can you tell yeah. this guy put in the work and how much does that maybe dictate yeah. the expectations moving forward? Yeah, because we played, you know, five first-year guys that – Really, well, I, I'm sorry, we played three first-year guys in Mamadi, Ty, and Kyle. Mamadi's coming off a redshirt year, and now we have Jay and, and DeAndre in that mix. I think um, uh, physically there's a noticeable – again, there's just your first year, it's – it's you can perform, but it's a little bit of survival, and you, you don't know what you don't know. And now these guys have had a year to address the physicality with their bodies, and they'll be more prepared – especially those guys because they're skilled and they're smart and heady players. But physically, that's not, you know, Kyle or Ty's strength. But they've worked on that and they'll continue to work over the years. But we need a big jump from them. And, and usually guys do make an improvement um, just being used to it confidence-wise. You know, they didn't play as much early. Then they started playing more at the end because they started figuring it out. So uh, you can tell by their bodies. You can tell, you know, just how, just how competitive they are and just – how they play in practice, and again, we'll we'll keep finding out. But I've liked the improvement of all the guys, but especially that first year, second year, that's important. Devin has done just about everything that's been asked since he got here. He's redshirted. He's yep. played the post. He's played point. Like whatever he's needed. Is this his year? Does he have a? What's your feeling on Devin? His attitude, yep. his composure, going into his final season with some of the guys ahead of him. Yep. That have like gone on now. I wish I could have taped Devin's response. We did a VAF social. Um, we were down in the Virginia Beach area, and they asked him about his time just coming in and having to wait. He just talked about it. You know, I wanted to play right away. I redshirted. And then my first year, I I really wanted to play. It was my second year program. And I I had Malcolm in front of all these guys, and I just learned. And, yeah, I was, I, I'm not sure about this. You know, and then he got into his sophomore year, and he became, just because he was steady, he was in his third year in our program, um, he just became an important part of it. He just talked about waiting and honoring the process as we talk about all the time and how worth it it was to keep improving. And though it didn't happen right away, it wasn't instant gratification. He just kept working, working, been part of some pretty special teams. And he's gotten better and better, and now he's in his fifth year. And, yeah, I think he's – He's looked good in practice. He, he No one works as hard as Devin. He goes after his game. Reminds me of Malcolm in some ways, the way he's driven and how he works. And again, just it's always hopefully you add a few things. You're a little better. You're a little more assertive. But but you know who you are as a player. Just because he's a fifth year doesn't mean Isaiah is going to be shooting a bunch of threes. He might shoot a few more. His shot looks better. Uh, doesn't mean Devin's going to be doing crazy stuff. But But they've earned the right to be a little more assertive and as long as they're helping the team, those are the things that happen. But he's just – he's a good example of of staying after it and not um, thinking the grass is greener and look how it's turned out for him. I think you mentioned that Frankie had not been practicing. Starting to shoot and move and do things, hopefully soon, pretty soon, but he had the procedure on his knee uh, in – I can't remember when it was. Uh, was it July or was it June? But um, he's – He's recovering well, and it'll be nice to get him out there with, um, you know, with another body because he's athletic. The question would oh. be, 
you've re had such a success redshirting people in the past. Is he a candidate? And what about Marco? Yeah, the, the plan is to redshirt Frankie. That was kind of established when he decided to have the procedure on his knee, the corrective procedure uh, whenever he, I think it was in June. So that was part of it. Um, and then as far as Marco goes, you know, Marco's the lone first year out there, you know, and I, and I actually, I was chewing out Marco in practice one time, you know, he's he was a little behind in some issue. And I, I caught out of the corner of my eye, Frank, Frankie was smiling kind of, you know, and I said, I said, you're going to get yours. I said, this guy's out here with all these guys who have the experience. And I said, you just got ice on your knee over there smiling. I said, when you get in there, it's going to be your turn. It's a big adjustment. I mean, everything's faster. Everything is is at a different pace. We're asking him to remember a lot of things, you know, system-wise, offensively, defensively, even for those guys who are red shirts. Now all of a sudden, now I'm looking at them a little different. They're not red shirts anymore. So the ability to think less and, and not have a divided mind and just play, that's still coming for – it will come for Frank, but for Marco, even Jay and DeAndre, that's going to be real important because you see the – I think Momney was Momney's gotten better, but it, at times is a little uncertain, and that that's what you're trying to train. Um, Marco's strong, physically good. We'll, we'll see where everything goes. I I don't think that's the plan with him, but I always leave it up to the players, and it just depends where. Again, we're at as we get into the the plane. We've got a couple of scrimmages in front of us, and maybe even a surprise one. You never know, but I'll leave that as the tease. So. <laughs>